Hi, this is Crystal Lee, the host of Total Restoration. I am here with the infamous and the most glorious Pop, also known as Poet of Peace. Poet of Peace, thank you and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. No problem. You know, like I know, we've known each other for quite some time now. Yes. And I knew you when you were in progress. And I am so glad to say that Planting Seeds for Lost and Found is available. Tell me about this journey. Uh, this has been uh, one heck of a journey. It's actually taken uh, a 12, 13 years to work on this project. And, um, you know, it's just amazing uh, how it all started out. Um, you know, I, I shared my testimony at the end of the book where I told people about how I asked God for a gift to reach people and how he blessed me with this gift of poetry. It's something that actually happened overnight, believe it or not. And, um, you know, how God started to give me the vision for the, uh, the pictures. The, uh, he gave me the... Uh, um, scriptures and everything and he also blessed me with the artist to be able to uh, do the drawings for the pictures and stuff and um, you know it took some time to actually put the whole thing together um, mm -hmm. once I was finally able to do it you know it took some years for me to even get the funds and all that to, right. to do it you know but it was a long very tiresome uh, journey but um, thank God you know his provision and um, it came to pass. Today we are here to talk about the new book, Planting the Seeds for a Lost and Found, that was recently published and is available in stores right now from Barnes and Noble, Amazon.com, from the one and only Pop. Pop, thank you so much again for, for just being here and allowing me to talk to you more about your book. Absolutely. Um, for people who don't know, tell me more about Pop. Who is Pop? Pop is, of course, uh, the Poet of Peace, which is what it stands for. Mm -hmm. And I'm a spoken word artist um, and author and a speaker and um, actually uh, I'm just trying to make my mark out in this world as an evangelistic poet mm -hmm. to evangelize the gospel through poetry. Pop, tell me a little bit about your journey. How, how did you go about creating this book? Well, um, to start out, I remember um, just to kind of make it short, I prayed to God to uh, ask him for a gift to use me to minister to the world and uh, he blessed me with the gift of poetry. Um, and so what I did then, you know, once I realized I had this gift of poetry, mm -hmm. I started to um, figure out, you know, what else can I do with it? And God started giving me the visions um, for the drawings that he wanted done, um, uh, the scriptures, um, and also uh, the graphics and stuff like that to go along with it. And so, um, which is a nice combination where people are getting three in one, right. the you know, the best of, of all three worlds. And so um, with that, I was able to utilize it. It took some time, some years to put everything together. Mm -hmm. um, some people tried to tell me just to do it in black and white, and I said, no, God wants this thing in color. And so I stuck with it, and um, I said, God, I, I don't have the funds. If you want this thing to get out here, you're going to have to bless me with the funds to do it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, God did. And, um, you know, he also blessed me with the artists right. uh, and the uh, graphic artists uh, to be able to do that. And, uh, that's how it came to be. Right, now tell us a little bit about the process of uh, right. selecting the color, because I know you're very meticulous. Yes, yes. So I know you have went through this book, you right, know, right. over and over again right. to make sure the graphics spoke the words that God gave you in a way that it's supposed to, as well as the colors represent what it's supposed to. So tell the audience and the viewers that are watching, how did you go about actually putting everything together, joining artists with graphic artists, and of course right, writing, right. and ministry, and scripture. You right. just have so many things, you know, yes. boiling around in this pot. No, absolutely. Thank you for asking. Um, it's funny because I, I, was, I didn't know what to do. Um, I, I just had these uh, visions and stuff. And so people used to tell me, um, maybe you need to go to the college and talk to some of the, they have artists up there, you know, mm -hmm. that you can go talk to them. So that's what I did. I went to the colleges and I talked to different people that, you know, that I heard could draw. And, um, you know, that's how I started out working with, like, my first artist. Mm -hmm. And then um, I remember... So, you know, I would be on the, on, I, I didn't have a car, so I used to, my own means of transportation was riding MARTA. Um, and so I would meet and talk to people on the bus. And, you know, some people would say, I'm an artist, or right. I know an artist. And, uh, of course, I would see some people that could draw, some that couldn't. So um, I was able to, um, you know, use who I thought was best for this project. Of course, I had to pray about it. Um, you know, and just even other people that I knew. And that one lady, she told me her husband could draw. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember um, asking, she actually asked him if he could. He's a professional artist. And um, he, I remember him telling me one day, he said, the only reason why I'm drawing this is because of my wife. And, you know, and I knew it was God. Right. And, and God even gave me the idea to have every single um, artist and uh, graphic artist that was a part of this book to, um, for, for me to be able to, uh, for them to sign over 
the rights for me to actually be able to have full ownership of all the artwork and graphics and everything. So, of course, um, thank God for that, you know, that I, I own everything now. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that they, you know, were being a blessing to me right. you know, to be able to do what they did. Tell me a little bit more about your writing journey. I mean, where did the name Pop come from? <laughs> <laughs> I get asked this question all the time. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, um, Pop came f originally from my mom, um, who named me Pop when I was a baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said uh, I had an old man soul, and I used to act like an old man all the time. She said I used to chill in a rocking chair, uh, and she said I used to look like an old man, act like an old man, and I was always lazy like an old man. Mm -hmm. So she named me Pop. And um, so anyway, as I got older, and as you see, God blessed me with this gift of poetry, mm -hmm. I remember um, a friend of mine, from high school, he, he gave me a picture of him and his family, and on the back of it, it said, uh, to the poet of peace. And I said, wow, I like that. And so, uh, it, it, so just, it just stuck. It, it stuck. Right. And so, um, uh, that, you know, that's, that's how the whole thing with pop came to be. Actually, it was a full circle for me mm -hmm. being a baby right. until I got older. And it's funny because I have older people say to me, I'm not calling you pop. And, I t and then when I tell them the meaning of how, what pop stands right. for, Pull a piece, then they say, "Oh, okay, I can call you Pop." Exactly, you gotta so, earn that. Yeah, I, I, is that right? Pop exactly. is, a, you know, not, <laughs> not an old man and a you know young man's body, so you gotta, right, gotta exactly, make, make got, sense. Right. So <laughs> when it makes sense to them, then they're like, "Okay, okay, I can do that." Then. Now, you many people have coined the term "struggling writer" or "struggling artist." Right. How do you balance being a struggling writer, if you can even say that, now that you're published and you're moving, right. um, and also managing your household and, and being a single dad? Right. Um, it is a lot. Um, <laughs> thank God that I have help. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I am a single parent of two daughters. Uh, I have full custody. Some people wonder when it, when you say single parent, they think and just you know you get them every weekend. It's like no, full time. Right. So with me, um, I, you know, I have uh, you know a lot of support, family, friends. You can't do hair. And, uh, no. <laughs> 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 and um, you know, and actually, it it's, it helps me out. Um, to the point where I can actually uh, go and take care of and do a lot of things that I need to when I have um, things that I need to write or uh, interviews and stuff like that. Um, sometimes uh, they come with me. It's, they're here, as a matter of fact. So mm -hmm. um, that's just a part of the process. Uh, and they actually get to see, uh, you know, their dad sometimes, uh, you know, uh, in the process and the work of, of what I do and, and so forth. But, um, but it's a challenge. I'm, I mean, you know, I'm not going to lie, it's a challenge. Um, Working full time, um, author, poet, right. writer, um, being a full time parent, full time. So I, I juggle a lot, but uh, it's only by God's grace and God's mercy that I'm able to do that. Mm -hmm. So now, Pop, some people might want to know some personal things about you. Do you mind so, if they? Uh, hey, go they on. Ask get, on. Get a little personal. <laughs> hey, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. You have a unique birthplace. Right. I, I've never been. So you got to tell me again, and for people who don't know. He's not born. He's born in a part of the United States that most people see as foreign. <laughs> so, so Bob, tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Where are you from? Sure, sure. Uh, it's actually something that people don't know. It's one of the biggest states in the United States. Exactly. And no, it's not Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it's more freezing. Right. Than that. Yes, yes. More of the uh, North Pole. Exactly. Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, and the first question that I get from everybody when they find that out is, are there black people in Alaska? <laughs> and, and it cracks me up. I'm like, of course, you see, you see me, right? right? You know, right. so uh, I tell them there's many of us, but it's, 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 uh, that's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, my family moved here in Atlanta uh, in 1991. Um, I remember my parents saying, uh, we're going to Atlanta for a two week vacation. Came here for two weeks and uh, they said, we're moving to Atlanta for the summer. Uh -huh. So um, I've been here since 91. So they tricked you. They, yeah, they tricked us, right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we, we were living the life, you know, uh, in the snow and, and skiing and everything. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we moved to this hot, sizzling, hot, hot Atlanta, as if they call snows, it. If it snows, we shut down. Yes, there everything. No. One inch, half an inch. <laughs> <laughs> all the inches, all the inches. No, no travel. So, yeah, so it's a joke to them when we, uh, they actually was laughing at us when we uh, recently had the, uh, you know, the, the two inches started. of snow and... <laughs> You know, they shut it down and everything, so. I know, yes. when you're from Alaska, you just don't understand a Georgia mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yes. so, so, Pop, for those who want to know, are you dating? Are you single? Uh, I'm, I'm not dating. I'm single. And, um, 
you know, I thank God that I've had this time to uh, just, you know, be able to get more with him, you know, spend time with my daughters and everything. But, um, yes, so. For the more ambitious, have you, are you married? Have you ever been married? No. Do you have ambitions to marrying? Uh, I'm not married. Uh, divorce. Um, I went through a you know, tragic, um, sad divorce. But, um, you know, God has healed, healed me mm -hmm. in the process. And um, Because your book, your book is more than just a book about life's demands, right. life's challenges. It's also a book of encouragement. Absolutely. For people who find themselves in situations that you actually speak to and minister to in your book, what are, what are some of the advice, what's some of the advice you would give people who are going through a divorce or who fit the descriptions of some of your characters in your book? Right. Um, <clears throat> that's why it's good for them to get this book because uh, they will definitely be ministered to. I have a mm -hmm. poem called um, It's About to Get Better. Right. So it's funny because when I'm going through stuff, um, um, Pop one second. We're going to take a hold there, and we're going to actually go sure. to one of the callers. Caller? Hey, what's going on? It's Charlie. Hi, Charlie. You are on with Crystal Lee and Pop, the poet of peace. Thanks for calling in. No problem. Uh, what's going on, Pop? Hey, how you doing, Charlie? All right. Uh, first and foremost, man, I just want to um, tell you that I'm a big fan of you, man, and um. Thank I tip you. my hat off to you, brother, on your success of your book. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. It's good to hear that. Okay, I just uh, had a couple of questions. Um, sure. First question. When you hear the title, Plant Seeds for the Lost and Found, how can this book be beneficial to the saved and unsaved readers? Sure, that's a good question. I appreciate you asking, Charlie. Um, just a shorten it up for you um basically for the save the, it's funny that god gave me this book titled planting seeds for the lost and found because as you hear planting seeds it's going to plant a seed for those whether people are saved or not saved um this book is to uh, for those who are not saved you know it's going to basically like get them to want to come to christ um it's going to draw them it's going to will them in that's why uh you know actually it's designed to uh, draw people in through the uh, art illustrations, uh, you know, kind of sway them over to read what it's saying, right. and then there's a scripture so that they can read it at the end. But for the um, for the found, uh, basically what it's going to do is spiritually edify and build up the church. So for those who are already in Christ, it's just going to lift them up, build them up, encourage them, uh, you know, to press forward, move on, but no matter what they're going through, hard times, you know, challenges, and that's for any whether you're saved or not saved. But that's what it's designed to do for the uh, for the found and uh, for the lost is, is to you know bring them to Christ because it's definitely going to uh, minister salvation um, everything uh, in this book to them uh, point to Jesus and even it even has a uh, the prayer of salvation at the end you know in case they want to uh, know how they can um, become a Christian or a believer in Christ and accept Jesus as, a, as their Lord and Savior. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh do you perform some of these uh, poetry uh, to, like, venues and stuff? I do. I do. Um, I get called out to uh, churches, uh, youth detention centers, uh, weddings, um, a lot of different places um, to do um, a spoken word event. Um, anywhere that I'm usually called, you know, God's will, I, I usually go and, um, and minister uh, through poetry. Wherever, wherever he sends me. We were talking about um, relationships and you um, right. coming out of um, a divorce, yes. as well as how your book is actually built to inspire people right. um, with different you know, issues, definitely different journeys. Right. How did you come up with many of the topics that you have in your book? Are they life? Right. Is it a life reenactment? Or, or exactly where did you get your material from? It's, it's definitely a um, life reenactment. Um, uh, just everyday life uh, trials and tribulations and situations that we go through on a daily basis mm -hmm. uh, which is why people are going to definitely be able to relate to this book um, such as uh, you know if you lost a, a family member um, right. or a loved one um, if you um, pretty much uh, gone through you know you lost your job you know um, uh, you just went through any kind of hardship I mean mm -hmm. everything in here is is something for everybody um, you know from People, you know, being on drugs to being out in the street to facing challenges with uh, uh, the enemy. You know, when they have the struggle between 
trying to live right uh, or getting caught up, you know, in the temptation and stuff. Um, this book is just really designed to uh, really minister um, to, to, you know, every heart, every soul out here. Make sure you cop his book. His book between now and March 1st, he is yes. going to be gifting a wonderful gift. He's going to give the first 20 people his uh, book signed and autographed by himself. And, of course, he's got to bonus you a little bit more than that. And he's also going to give you a personalized poem from his desk to yours. So make sure you contact him. Here are several ways that you can contact him to get your personalized autographed book today. You can do that by emailing him at pop at poetofpeace.com. You can also visit his website, www.poetofpeace.com. And you can also contact him via email and give them a phone call. Pop, tell them how they can reach you through mail. And you can also reach me through mail at 2451 Cumberland Parkway, Suite 3137, Atlanta, Georgia, 30339. And the phone, the phone number that you can contact us at is 678-871-POET. Don't you love it when you get words and letters? Makes it easier. It sure enough does. Yes. So easy memory, guys. Contact him today. Put your orders in. Call him, email him, or mail him directly, and you'll get your personalized autographed copy of the one and only Planting Seeds for the Lost and Found. Make sure you get it today between get now it. and March 1st. Remember that date, March 1st. March 1st. Get it. Get <laughs> your copy. That. Cop it. <laughs>